The SCP Foundation is home to plenty of anomalies whose reputations precede them. Here at SCP Explained, we've discussed quite a few of the most notable anomalies contained by the Foundation. From the wholesome half-cats and tickle monsters, to the nightmarish giant reptiles and reality-warping old men. But there are very few anomalies so popular, so famous, or infamous, depending on who you ask, that they attract a non-stop revolving door of would-be worshippers to sue chaos all around the Foundation. What's it like to be a creature that's always the center of attention, whether he wants to be or not? Today, we're taking a look at the lifestyle of the involuntarily famous SCP-2662. We took the liberty of observing a full day in the life of the entity known by many as Cthulhu. From his morning routine to his bedtime and all the little moments of unplanned chaos in between. With his permission, we compiled everything we saw into a video for your entertainment. Welcome to A Day in the Life of SCP-2662. 9 AM Time to wake up, stretch your tentacles, and get ready for the day ahead. At a respectable not too early and not too late time, usually around 9 AM but sometimes a little bit later if he's had a particularly late night, SCP-2662 climbs out of bed and uses his computer to throw on one of his favorite podcasts. Preferred topics for listening include game reviews and news, comedic advice podcasts, and daily news roundups. What he eats for breakfast depends on the day, but his favorite morning meals are pancakes and huevos rancheros. No matter what he's eating, he washes it down with a tall glass of orange juice. His nutrition needs aren't like those of a human, but it's important to start the day with a tasty meal no matter what. It's the little things that make life worth living. While he eats his breakfast, he reads a newspaper, brought to him by the Foundation staff each morning according to his request. The publication varies, but no matter what, his favorite section is arts and style or human interest. He always reads the whole thing from front to back, including the obituaries and wedding announcements. He only gets one a day after all, and he knows it's important to appreciate things to their fullest extent and take nothing for granted. 10 AM Now it's time for SCP-2662's day to really get going. He hops in the shower and listens to another podcast as he warms up, literally. He likes the water to be as hot as the Foundation will allow before they complain about the utility bill. After he dries off, he gets a hankering for a little bit of gaming. Just as he starts to settle into his gaming chair and look through his library of video games, a member of Task Force Town 9 knocks on the door to his containment room. Hey, you busy? Not really. Something going on? Yeah, we're just keeping an eye on a couple religious groups of interest. According to the chatter on the forums and a few of the leaders' social media accounts, they might be planning something disruptive, you know, lots of posts about a day of great freedom and unleashing the Lord of Madness upon the pathetic world. Cthulhu sighs. Must be a day that ends in a Y. Sorry, buddy. The officer shrugs, not sure what else to say. Clearly, the two of them have spent their fair share of days fending off mad cultists. You know the drill, if anyone who's not supposed to be here shows up, starts sacrificing goats and such, just let us know. Hopefully it won't come to that, we should stop them before they get that far. Hope so. Last time they got blood everywhere and broke my copy of Resident Evil 4. 12 PM. Time flies when you're having fun. And when you're pacing back and forth, worried about cultists breaking in to bother you with who knows what. Before long, it's 12 o'clock. And that means lunchtime. When it comes to lunch, SCP-2662 has simple tastes. He likes a good old grilled cheese and tomato soup, a bean burrito, or a steaming bowl of ramen. With that, he's partial to a sugary soda, or sometimes lemonade. He often likes to tune into gaming streams on Twitch, especially obscure indie titles, or if he's feeling like something a bit more familiar, Minecraft. But on this particular day, he has a visitor. SCP-507, the reluctant dimension hopper, has swung by with his own lunch to have a catch-up chat. A huge fan of meeting other friendly anomalies, especially those completely different from himself, SCP-507 often stops by Cthulhu's containment room whenever he happens to be in the same dimension. Hey, Squidward, how's it going? SCP-2662 hasn't seen the show that this particular nickname came from, but he enjoys being called a friendly name instead of some manner of esoteric title. During this visit, SCP-507 shares stories of his recent travels with SCP-2662, including his recent disturbing brush with a smiling man, and his much more delightful time in a dimension where he found himself on a beach where the sand was made of popcorn and the sea was made of Coca-Cola. 
Any weird cults come by lately? He asks after finishing his story. Not in a few weeks. Tentacles crossed it stays that way. But, you know my luck. Someone will probably be drawing arcane symbols on the walls and doing weird chants in no time. Bummer. 507 nodded sympathetically. Wanna play co-op for a bit? I haven't had time in forever. Sure. Even when it's a rare treat. It's always nice to spend time with a friend doing something you both love. Even if we can't relate much about SCP-2662's day-to-day life, we can at least relate to that. It doesn't have to be gaming either. It can be painting, baking, or even just watching a TV show you love. The activity doesn't matter nearly as much as the company, after all. 1.30 PM After about an hour of gaming with SCP-507, SCP-2662 gets an unwelcome interruption. Just when the two enter a new dungeon, ready to take on the bosses waiting there, right when SCP-2662 asks to be healed, SCP-507 disappears from his seat, popping over to wherever his anomalous dimension hopping ability dragged him to next. Oh, goodbye. He knows 507 can't hear him, but he wants to bid him farewell just the same. He turns to his computer and boots up a game he can play by himself. He only hopes his friend was sent somewhere safe and that he'll come back sometime soon. 2 p.m. At 2 o'clock, SCP-2662 gets yet another unwelcome interruption. A loud boom rocks the room as explosives detonate nearby, breaking a wall of the containment unit open. While the mobile task forces do their best to subdue the invaders responsible, they are all knocked out by a grenade filled with an unidentifiable form of sleeping gas. With no one to deter them, a group of strange civilians in red robes come pouring into SCP-2662's room. O oh, great and powerful Lord of Darkness, we come to free you from this infernal prison! One man shouts, brandishing a candelabra filled with lit black candles. Oh, no thanks, I I'm good here. But we brought you an offering! Another man steps forward, tossing a bag of dried bats onto 2662's bed. Hey, oh man, I sleep there! Gross! Cthulhu groans. We have 13 more offerings, and then the sacrificial ritual can commence! You just need to come with us so it can begin! The day of great freedom! when you will unleash your thousand-year reign of madness upon the land. I'm not really into madness, I'm more into Overwatch. SCP-2662 backs away from the supplicants, even as they come at him with more and more grotesque offerings. Cow tongues, unidentifiable mushrooms. One woman tries to hand him a crying baby. He refuses each one, but they are persistent. As he's swatting away jars of pickled frogs, a woman begins drawing a circle around the room in what he hopes is red paint but fears is something else entirely. Um, <clears throat> thank you for all these gifts. You have proven yourself as loyal followers. I'm going to stay here though to uh, spread the madness. From here, you can all go home. He tries to shoo them out, but they continue to press closer. Thankfully, his rescue finally shows up. Task Force Town 9 swoops in at this point and begins knocking out and administering amnestics to all of the cultists. They may not be able to cure them of their mad devotion, but they can at least make sure the cult forgets the location of the containment unit. At least, for a little while. They're able to dispense with these particular intruders humanely, but they may need to use lethal force for the next ones. That's always a possibility. After the cultists have been removed from the site, some maintenance staff are called in to repair the damage to the wall where the explosives knocked it in. While they work, 2662 goes over his newspaper one more time, making sure he didn't miss anything. Attention to detail is an important skill to have, especially if one intends to get the most out of their everyday life. He finds a few editorials he neglected to read before, and enjoys finishing up the newspaper in its entirety. 4 PM After the task force returns to their stations and the maintenance crew has finished fixing the wall, SCP-2662 turns to one of his newest hobbies. He attempted to hide this pursuit from the Foundation at first, but they agreed to let him try it out as long as he followed some safety precautions. So now, at around 4 p.m. every day, SCP-2662 streams on his very own Twitch channel. He never uses identifying information and keeps his camera turned off the entire time, lest the internet sees his tentacled face, but he does talk to the few viewers in his chat via a microphone. What's up? It's Squidboy2662, back to play some games for you guys again. Hope you're all having a killer day and thanks for tuning in. 
Today I'm going to be checking out Apex Legends for the very first time. A lot of you recommended this game to me, so I'm stoked to check it out. As a small fan community watches, SCP-2662 tries out the popular MMORPG and plays his way through it for several hours. One person in the chat asks if he has ever heard of the, quote, great tentacled beast of legend, but he makes sure to block them before they give the rest of the chat any ideas. He doesn't want people to watch his streams because he's some famous elder god or something. He wants to be liked for who he is. 7 p.m. Every gamer needs to break for some fuel, and SCP-2662 is no exception. At around 7, he wraps up his stream, thanks all of his viewers and subscribers, and gets ready to have some dinner. He throws on another podcast, this time an actual play podcast following a tabletop gaming campaign, and digs into his last meal of the day. Like all of his other meals, it varies from day to day, but most of the time he goes with his favorite, pizza. A big cheese pizza delivered from a local pizza shop by a delivery boy who has received more than his fair share of amnestics, and can never remember why exactly this random unmarked building seems so familiar. Munching on his pizza and listening to tales of magic and mayhem acted out by a group of friends at a game table, SCP-2662 can't help but feel just a little melancholy. He's happy with what he has, of course, but he dreams of a normal life. The kind of life where he and his friends could play games together or record a podcast, where he could share this pizza with someone else. But he might not ever have that, and it's something that he has to accept. He can still choose to appreciate what he has, rather than mourn what he doesn't. After he's finished eating and the episode is finished, it's back to the normal grind at the computer. He turns on The Sims for a little while, constructing the kind of normal life he'd like to fantasize about sometimes. But then one of his Sims burns down the house while trying to make eggs, and he gives up on that particular endeavor to play some Minecraft. 11 p.m. Some nights, the excitement keeps SCP-2662 awake and playing his games until the wee hours of the morning. Tonight, however, he finds himself exhausted from an unexpectedly action-packed day, courtesy of those cultists. He powers down the game, turns on his final podcast of the day, a guided meditation to wind him down for sleep, and climbs into bed. Tomorrow he'll get up and do it all again, doing his best to carve out a little bit of peace in a strange, chaotic world. Maybe tomorrow, he'll just be left alone, allowing to be himself instead of what everyone expects him to be. He'll just have to stick it out and see. That's the beauty of life, after all. Tomorrow is always a new day. Want to own an SCP of your own? Go to scpswag.com for premium, anomalous merchandise. Now go check out A Day in the Life of SCP-049. And what does SCP-999 do all day, hour by hour, for more anomalous daily routines?